At one point, we see a particularly like harrowing, frightening image, like it's a big reveal, mm. and you literally slapped your thigh and went, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> The Marvel Cinematic Universe keeps chug, chug, chugging along. Now it's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 5. It's going to be in theaters. Volume 3. 3. Sorry. It's going to be in theaters May 5th. <laughs> phase right. 5. That's it's why I had five. 5 in my head. May 5th in theaters, but the embargo is lifted. So we're talking about it now. Christy, what's this one about? We were always searching for a family until we found each other. This is a non-spoiler review. I feel like at some point, Alonzo, you and I need to actually have a spoiler talk. I think some, that would be yes. Yeah. Maybe in a couple of weeks we can do like a live spoiler chat with all you folks and we can work through all this together because like stuff happens that's intense yeah. and complicated. Um, so we're going to try to make this as simple as possible and just give you an idea of how we feel. So it begins in kind of a somber way. You know, the thing with the Guardians movies is that they've been kind of singular in their playfulness and their jokiness in this like ragtag band of misfits giving each other a hard time, but like playfully because they are hashtag family. Um, even though volume two did get a little more serious, still three begins on a very somber note with this kind of haunting acoustic version of Creep, Creep. by Radiohead yeah. that Rocket is listening to. They're on Nowhere. Rocket's kind of down, Star-Lord's kind of down because Gamora's gone and Groot's being Groot and uh, Drax and Mantis are helping like rebuild nowhere and try to make it homey for everybody. Warlock comes barreling in, played by Will Poulter. Like this golden god supernova comes blasting through, tears the place up, and he's looking for Rocket. He is there on behalf of somebody who wants him. And uh, so, the, so the purpose of the rest of the movie, it's it's a go fetch the thing quest kind of story for two and a half hours is they have to get this thing to help fix Rocket once he is injured in this attack. And while he is injured and he is in a coma ostensibly, he has a series of flashbacks that provide his origin story. And here is where things get really dark and harrowing and, and quite traumatic. Um, I am not familiar with the comics. A lot of folks in our comments who do know about the comics have said, well, yeah, duh, of course, it's it's Rocket's origin story. So of course, it's going to be darker. Um, but it's an uncomfortable kind of slamming together of this darker, more serious story with some really harrowing visuals. And then the light glib jokiness of the Guardians that you know with like the needle drops that you expect from a Guardians movie, although they feel like they're all over the place this time versus like the thematic cohesion of one or two. This is James Gunn's last movie for Marvel before he takes off to go and run DC. So this is his last Guardians movie. We all know this. This does not mean that the Guardians are done. Oh no. Oh no. No one's ever done. <laughs> um, and there are a couple of uh, post credit scenes for you to savor and enjoy and uh, prognosticate over. So, you know, it has its moments. There's some really cool production design. There's a whole weird planet thing that they <laughs> land on that's like squishy. And it looks like it's made of like meat Skin. and plasma. <laughs> yeah. It's gnarly. And when it's like that, when it's weird and colorful and just out there, this movie is a blast. And it's what I've enjoyed about the Guardians films previously. I love the first two Guardians films. They're among my favorites in the MCU. I like the weirder, lighter stuff, like Thor Ragnarok, like the first Doctor Strange. I like Guardians. So please know that listening to us, that like we enjoy the Guardians movies in general. Yeah. We are not out gunning for this. Ha ha. It just feels like a very awkward mixing of this dark disturbing material with like jokiness with like trying to wrap up these characters and get all the music in uh, it's it's a weird miss for me yeah no i i agree i think like there is nothing wrong on paper with trying to pivot from a sense of jokiness and goofiness to like something darker i think the tom holland spider-man movies have pulled that off mm -hmm. you know where you get the sort of freewheeling you know nerdy cute neurotic peter parker and then it's not until like the most recent movie that we get into the with great power comes great responsibility peter parker who has to like make sacrifices and difficult choices and the films got us there 
this movie is trying to get us to a whole different place than the Guardians movies have ever been before. And it's very abrupt and it's very, it's too hard a turn and it doesn't, it's not accommodated by the rest of this. And you're right. It's doing that. And at the same time, trying to hang on to its old cake of like, you know, Mantis and Drex, you know, needling each other and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. This doesn't, work and there are a few emotional moments that land but they're so not connected to anything else that they just sort of float in the air and the, you know it's it's like they're in the vacuum of space they are airless <laughs> and they have nowhere to land you know uh so yeah i was really put off by this and i don't think that the shifts in tone work others disagree i'm seeing yeah. early reviews that found it really moving and you know a bold step forward and Wish I'd seen that movie because I just don't think this works. And I see what they're trying to do, but I think you just you're just constantly seeing him fall short. Like somebody asked us on Twitter, "Oh, was you know Gun already checked out?" It's like, no, I think he's no, trying for totally. something here, but I don't think it's working. Yeah, and I was thinking about it afterward. Some of the the action sequences just look like big noisy stuff slamming into each other mm -hmm. right and there's one long sequence in particular that is meant to look like one long single take yeah that has some cool moves but also has like a who's doing what to whom element of it and the song that's blaring is so overpowering that it's a distraction so frequently within this film it almost felt like he's reverse engineering it. Like he picked a playlist of songs that and he then wrote liked a movie around them and then made a movie around them because Kinda. they're so, the songs are so out of place and in no way connect to what people are yeah. doing that they, they like distract from what we're watching. They feel arbitrary. I think it makes you really appreciate it. in retrospect how much, especially in the first film, mm -hmm. they meant something to this lead character. This, these are like, these were the songs his mother loved and he lost his mother at a young age. And so they've become the soundtrack of his life. And here's just like beep, boop, boop, you know, like Spotify playlist, whatever. I don't know who gives a shit. Um, the scene you're talking about, I think is a direct correlation to a similar scene that happens in the first movie. And it's a very interesting study in contrast because mm. in the original movie, it's exciting and it's a cool action sequence, but like there is a sense of fun to it. And this one is kind of gnarly. Like it's real violent in in comparison to what they did the first time around. That it sort of is a, a kind of microcosm of the, of the whole movie of why it's not working for me. And it got to the point with like more revelations of other dark shit later where I literally just kind of threw my hands up. And I'm like, really? We're doing this now too? <laughs> So yeah, I I I think this is one of this is going to be one of my least favorite of the MCU and I like a lot of these movies. I generally like the world they've created, but this is down at the bottom of the list for me with like you know the, that that Hulk movie, you know. <laughs> At one point, we see a particularly like harrowing, frightening image, like it's a big reveal, mm. and you literally slapped your thigh and went, "Oh, come on!" <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a point where I audibly booed. There's like a big, <laughs> a big twisty kind of thing that happens, and I went, "Boo!" Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're we'll definitely... go more in depth on our Yes, we'll time. talk about it later. I don't want to ruin it for you. Um, but yeah, I would say totally it is a jumble in terms of visual effects. It is a jumble. Um, performances are hit and miss here for me. Yeah. It's just I cramming give a, a lot of people and a lot of story. The main cast, I feel like they're either called upon to do the same old, same old they've been doing for several movies now. Zoe Saldani does a lot of shouting. And, and so does Karen Gillan. And so does mostly so does Karen Gillan. She's a little better at it. And and because that's what she's been doing the whole time. And and Chris Pratt, if you thought he looked checked out during the holiday special, he's not much more into it here, I don't think. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to Miriam Shore, Yitzhak from uh Hedwig and the Angry Inch, who plays a lieutenant of the bad guy here. And just like there's something I, I spent the whole movie going. I know who that is. I know who that is. Cause they're like, you know, they're, they've, they've aliened her up a bit. A and when I finally figured out, I was like, of course, because she has this, she's gorgeous, but she can be like very chameleonic mm -hmm. in terms of like what, how her looks change. And so they make really good use of that here. So I, I dug that. Oh yeah. No, there's some interesting bit players here and there. Like I enjoyed Linda Cardellini's performance, for example. Mm -hmm. I will say that. Um, anyway, I'm very mixed on it. I'm going to say like a 5.8. 
I'm saying a four. Uh, this oh, really? movie, I oh, was gosh. I was annoyed far more <laughs> than I was delighted. And again, uh, I think I'm not saying that this movie had to be in lockstep with what the mm-hmm. Guardians were doing before, but it does not earn its attempts to break out of it and do something completely different. It just doesn't. All right. Um, come back soon for our spoiler talk. We'd love to hear from you.